be Barbier. Today, I'm going to introduce the second Renaissance project, which is a gateway uh, to this moment of civilizational crisis and awakening. Uh, it's a project of a variety of people, a life itself and friends. And I want to start out by saying a little bit for those of you who haven't uh, met me or life itself before. Very briefly, we're a collective of pragmatic utopians and we're dedicated to wiser living and cultural transformation and social transformation. And we we're kind of really interested in approaches that prioritize inner development uh, or conscious evolution, if you like, and cultural change in a rigorous and pragmatic practical way. And we do research, we create hubs, we run residencies and more. And you can find out more about life itself on lifeitself.org. I imagine most people who've come to this call are familiar uh, because you might've come through our, our community already. And I want to say a little bit also at the beginning about this project. This project, well, Life Itself has played a big role, is actually being curated by a variety of different people, um, some of whom I think most of whom are on the call today, and so they can wave, but like there's myself, there's Catherine, but there's also Daniel Johnson, uh, there's James Baker uh, from Intentional Society, uh, there's my colleague Lauren, there's Simon uh, here, and there's also Rosie Bell and Sylvie uh my uh my co-founder so we actually have a curating team and we also have been really want to acknowledge and appreciate that we had we have a, a set of advisors who've given advice ongoing input into the project uh, including alex biner ali biner from who was the co-founder of rebel wisdom daniel thorson um from the emerge podcast and other things isabel granich uh, jamie bristow joe lightfoot uh, Narian Wong, Oren uh, Slosberg, uh, Peter Lindbergh of the Stoa, and Phil Chen and Richard Barlett. So I also wanted to say, really want to acknowledge up front, this is a team effort. This is something that many people have contributed to, even if I'm going to do the bulk of the presentation today about this project. Now, I want to start out by outlining a little bit about the Second Renaissance uh, effort. And... I can also, if people want to later on, say a little bit of the background of this project. Today, I'm going to skip that because I want to get into the meat of what we're doing. But this, this is kind of builds on uh, almost like four or five years of work. It's kind of a culmination of that or an ongoing part of that. But there are three connected parts of this project in terms of like actual stuff you can get. Um, one is that there's an accessible narrative and a theory of change. Uh, about the second renaissance or more broadly this space we'll come to that there's a set of maps and kind of navigation tools for the space for people who want to get into it or go deeper and then there's also spaces for kind of dialogue discussion collaboration like there's a wiki there's um, a forum there's a chat space and i'm going to talk a little bit i'm going to demonstrate all of those to you in a moment i'm going to come and walk through them on the the site and so on <laughs> But I want to talk a little bit about why uh, we're doing this briefly. Like, why are we creating these things? So first of all, we want, why do we have this accessible narrative and theory of change? And I could even say simple uh, narrative and theory of change, and probably in some case, maybe even simplistic. And this is on the landing page of the site, and there's a white paper. And I want to emphasize to probably most of you on this call today, that if you go to the landing page of the website and we'll go together in a moment, you're going to be like, this is all familiar to me. I know this already. Why are you telling me this? And I want to emphasize then that there are two purposes of this project in particular, uh, of, and particularly of this part of it. So one, we wanted, even at Life Itself, but we think it's also valuable from talking to other people in the space, a, a kind of shareable access point for newcomers. People who are kind of arriving or maybe don't even know that much about this space. Um, you know, this space, when I keep referring to it, I say, you know, things like Metacrisis, Metamodern, you know, Great Turning, Liminal Web, Game B, you know, there's this, you know, I can come back to like, oh, this is this the same space or different ones or approximate ones, but this overall area that life itself has found itself in. One of the things we notice in general is that it's not so easy um, to get into this space. Um, that, uh, just a second. Oh. 
Uh, I'm just here. Let's see. I'm in the. Oh. This meeting is being recorded. Very good. Um, what we found is that, you know, in general, it's not so easy to share this with others. You know, if you might personally know all about metamodernism or metacrisis or whatever, but what about your high school best friend or your parents? You know, they probably don't understand what you're up to. And at least my own personal experience and talking with others, it's not as easy to actually explain about it. You know, you end up you know, I know, pointing to a variety of different things, this podcast, this talk, whatever. So what we try to do here is to present what we see as the core of these ideas in a very simple and accessible way. And you can then, in a way, just share this website with people. So that's one motivation. And we think this is really important because for this movement or this you know, dream of a radical social transformation, that at least we have, of a radically wiser, weller world, we does require for this narrative to be easily comprehensible and accessible, um, especially to people kind of coming newer to it. So now there's the second part of this, which is that um, we want this to be kind of, at, sorry, uh, there we go. I think we've jumped um, here. Uh, there's, a, there's a bug in my presentation. So I'll just explain what I was gonna say there. Uh, in a second, which is that the second point here um, is that we want a reference narrative for people who are already in the space. So one of the other things that we've noticed here is that even for people who are, even if you're like, this is stuff you talk about all the time, you know, we talk about this great moment of change, you know, these different terms, polycrisis, metacrisis, the great transition, regenerative. Um, are we really talking about the same thing? Um, do we actually agree on what this moment is composed of, what we're going towards? Do we really agree on the theory of change and how to get there? And our experience has been it's not so clear, actually. Um, as we talk to people, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of interest, there's a lot of people who sensing something's really happening. Yet when you actually engage in deeper conversation, there can be a lot of things that are not so clear. In fact, it's even the problem that, you know, there are these new technical terms that people have kind of invented. Um, there are some terms that maybe mean the same thing, but are different names. Maybe people mean different things by the same term. You know, do you mean by metacrisis what I mean by metacrisis? And it's quite difficult to work its way out. So one other major purpose of providing a simple narrative in the white paper is that it's not the only, but it's at least a reference point that you can look at and say, okay, here's a clear, simple theory of change. Um, you know, maybe I don't agree with it, all of it, um, but at least then we're like, oh, okay, we can kind of discuss. We can be like, there's a con something concrete that we can point to. And it gives a chance to get clear on the narrative, um, to see whether there's agreement or there's not agreement, it can be debated, discussed, and kind of flattened out. People can know where they stand. And that's really helpful in our experience if you want to collaborate with people to know that. Um, and alignment doesn't always mean agreement, but you kind of like, ah, oh, I at least know what you mean by that term or I mean by that term. And so that's another major reason for the project. Um, now, second part of this project is the eco, the kind of mapping and uh, material and the navigation material. So, that's so people can kind of find their way in and find their way around. I'm going to show that in a moment as well. Um, and again, we've just to say, we found the space sometimes quite confusing. There's a lot of players, who's there, what's going on. And we've been doing this mapping now since 2019, 2020. And we've, we're going to show you some of those maps. And finally, there's the dialogue and discussion. So we believe that kind of things become deeper and richer and maybe even more accurate out of quality discussion. So once you've got, you know, even for example, the reference narrative, there's probably different opinions about it. Do people agree with parts of it? Would they frame it differently? What do particular terms mean? You know, is stage theory important or not? <laughs> um, you know, there's all these kind of uh, things. That's And that's why we created these other spaces like the wiki and the forum and even the chat. So there's some kind of area to explore these ideas uh, more, more deeply and more profoundly, and what they also look like in practice. Um, you know, not just theory, but what does this actually look like? So let's now come and do something of a, uh, of a walkthrough of the, of the project. So I think you can still see uh, my web, my browser. I think it's loading. Um, 
So this is the website. And I'm just going to walk you through the narrative as it come up now. Uh, and I also just want to check, is there anything, Sylvia, you wanted to add there? Oh, no, it's good. Good for the moment. So we live in a moment of civilizational crisis and awakening or rebirth, a second renaissance. I'm also happy to talk quite a bit later on about the term second renaissance, why we use that term and so on. But that was even cho chosen out of a lot of thought over the last few years. And it's from this old paradigm of modernity to a new paradigm of interconnectedness, wisdom and inner growth beyond capitalism. Sounds wonderful. But what does that mean? So the thing that we want to share here that we formally call the four noble beliefs is you know, first, there's something wrong. There's something not working. There, there is an illness. Our world is in crisis. We are witnessing an escalating series of these crises, ecological, political, and social. And our illness is serious. It might even be terminal, right? The systems of global civilization risk collapse and resulting in large-scale destruction of life. Now, again, I think on this kind of call, most people would, I don't know, but would be like a thumbs up on this. Um, and but the, but it's still important to kind of establish the ground. So the, the other point here is that accurate diagnosis is vital. Um, people might agree on the symptoms, but what about is what's the actual cause of this disease? Um, because treating the superficial symptoms won't be enough. So the, the next point here is that foundational to our civilization are shared views and values. Like water to a fish, the views and values we live by are often invisible to us. Yet they shape our way of thinking and being what we believe is possible, what we prioritize and dismiss, what we consider normal. And I want to reiterate here that I really hope this is the kind of thing where you're going, come on, Rufus, get on with it. Isn't this obvious? Remember, is this something that you could send to a friend or a family member or someone who wasn't so acquainted with this space? And we believe the next point is this breakdown originates in our cultural foundations. The symptoms we are witnessing have roots in views and values that are shared at a cultural level at the, in the paradigm of modernity. And modern views and values are at the root of our crises. I don't mean they're the sole cause. I think these things go even deeper into our psyche as human beings, things that we can perhaps transform, but which are very deeply rooted. But modern views and values like individualism, progress, rationality, freedom and equality have brought extraordinary material progress and advanced individual liberty. However, they now cast long shadows. Now, in our view, modernity is coming to an end. It's exhausted. And now we have endless growth, materialism, techno-solutionism, and an addiction to certainty and control, which are driving exploitation, destruction of nature, nihilism and loneliness, and an ever-widening wisdom gap. And the key point here is that any solution, therefore, has to go to the roots as well. We can't address the current crises through the logic and value systems that created them. We can't simply, um, you know, just do even some systems change. It requires being change. And so any solution has to go, in that sense, radical. And we need profound shifts in our ways of being, thinking, feeling, and acting. The emergence of a major new cultural and social paradigm that transcends modernity. Now, the great news for us uh, as humanity, I would even say, but even for us on this call, is that cultural paradigms can and do evolve. Uh, human consciousness, I would suggest, has evolved over, over history. So views and values can change. The deep stories that shape civilization have evolved throughout history. New paradigms can emerge, which transcend old ideas and offer responses to the problems and limitations of the old world, to the climate crisis, to the wisdom gap. However, I do want to emphasize this point of darkness before dawn. Uh, this is a time of crisis, and there may well be darkness before dawn. Modern civilization is in decline modernity some level of societal collapse may even be likely at this point and i guess the silver lining if you want to see it that way if there is not total collapse at least is that crisis can inspire transformation when you think even personally most when i look at my, my own life whenever i actually seriously changed or seriously looked at the way that i live my life or the way that i saw the world, 
Well, it was moments of real difficulty often. Um, when an organization I was running was having, you know, having a meltdown, it might have ended um, or in a divorce. So breakdown is, can be a precursor for deep cultural transformation. Modernity itself was born in the last Renaissance, which was preceded by the medieval period and the Black Death and the, you know, the terrible 14th century. And it was then a period of great cultural rebirth. So a new regenerative paradigm is needed. Modern materialism has reduced complex life to some of its parts and deprioritized the human inner world, leading to breakdown. And a livable future will demand a new paradigm rooted in understanding of the whole. And the good news is something is emerging. Much is yet to be determined, I think, about that. Who? I'm not sure there's even one future. There might be a multiplicity. But what kind of views and values might underpin in a wise well a world? And here's just, I'm not saying this is an exhaustive list, this is suggestive, but I think it's important to be concrete about what we imagine these kind of futures to look like. And so one important aspect is inner growth, prioritized over material growth, not that we don't want both, we want an integral future um, and a recognition of our potential to consciously evolve wisdom uh the idea of like which i think is a recognition of the limits of reason for example the importance of the whole the value of the long term you can think of you know many of the p figures maybe we're familiar with in space ian mcgilchrist um john viveki and others talking about the importance of wisdom or i think things that look like wisdom into being or interconnectedness seeing profoundly and clearly our interdependent relationship to each other and the planet and a form of spirituality and I would say religion integrated in some way into our collective life, maybe very much in a non-dogmatic and open-minded and maybe plural way. And finally, something, a system, a socio-economic system beyond capitalism and, so, and socialism grounded in new ways to assess value. And I think there are many more people might add to that list, but that's an idea. And finally, I think this is already happening. I mean, the very fact that we're having this call that others are here um, gives all of us hope. Um, a paradigm shift is possible. It's already starting to happen. An ecosystem is emerging and there's a calling to respond to it. And so I want to talk very then briefly about like the ecosystem. Um, you can find more about it on this page. Um, I think there's quite a bit. There's several reports. This is where we've done works. So if you want to find organizations, if you want to explore, this is also where we're working. It's not yet fully published, but like a Rosetta Stone kind of type effort to maybe to map between some of the different subspaces or subtribes in this area. And there's also this map uh, that is recently produced and is very much impressionistic. And we love uh, suggestions to improve it, which actually kind of tries to lay out uh, at least our, one of our takes uh, uh, on the different, you know, this, this, the different domains or, you know, um, sub areas of this space um, that you can really examine at leisure and which is obviously limited by the space we can put on a readable map. So I'm sure there's more. And I think there's one thing just at this point, I don't know if you got ready, Catherine, with the Menti poll, I'd be quite interested we're going to do a small poll and then a breakout room in a moment that we're going to come to if we got that ready. Um, and so you can find more. You can read about the, some of the key resources. We've listed related mapping efforts. There's, um, you know, the different names. Are they the same? And there's also these directories and specific mapping research that we've done. And we're also pointing to other people's work. Um, and I want to emphasize this is the early release. There's quite a lot we really want to still do and that we're just beginning in terms of curating other material from other places. Um, the last is obviously, I won't maybe show it so much, but there's uh, Simon might get a moment or later on if people got questions. Simon is the lead curator of the wiki. Uh, there's a wiki that's been started um, with a variety of material in it. Um, there's like a concept list that's under development that we're starting to create. Um, that people could add to, um, that there's, uh, as we say, it's by no means constitutes a definitive list. Um, we know that there's a lot to add here. And we're also very well, I want to acknowledge that we're very appreciative and we even have input from like, for example, Phil Chen, I'm not sure he's managed to make the call today, but he's an advisor. And I know he's been like the lead curator of like the, the Game B Wiki. 
Um, so we're getting advice input from him. Uh, so yeah, there's the wiki. There's uh, there's also a Discord chat that you can join. There's a forum that will be up, and there's also a newsletter. I think that one of the things, and I emphasize the newsletter is going to be partly news, but partly uh, mainly about trying to curate some of the best material we can find, or that other people suggest from our advisors that we could point to that's kind of introductory or is the kind of best, uh, you know, some of the best kind of introductory or briefing notes for the ecosystem. So the newsletter won't just be kind of updates, but will be more about, um, you know, the kind of curated content from the ecosystem. Uh, I think that that's uh, a little bit, I could say more about that, but I want to take a moment now in a second. Oh, let me uh, just make sure this has come back to the, the, um, yeah, there's a couple of other things I should also mention, actually, as well as the intro narrative. So let me, uh, the other thing is there is a white paper. So if you if you go here uh, to the bottom and you want to download the white paper, there is a full, much fuller document that you can share and read, which again, is not intended to be particularly original. Uh, this is not claiming uh, that this is novel and it references some of the, you know, it's a distillation, but it is a relatively readable, uh, we hope, a kind of shorter, like 30 page introduction to these ideas. So defining the kind of this idea of the second Renaissance and providing me in a way we've been testing out, you know, with people who aren't already really deeply into this space, kind of defining some of the ideas uh, and introducing some of the ideas of, you know, cultural evolution, um, you know, the idea of the first Renaissance as a an analogy for what's going on now, which we found a very helpful way to explain the idea of a major cultural paradigmatic shift. Um, maybe also some of the things of like what's going on at the moment in the, the friction between the modernity, post-modernity and, you know, meta-modernity or whatever comes next and so on. So there's also the white paper. Um, we also uh, should mention that there's also... Uh, a video that we'd like to, we're developing, uh, that should be a shorter for people who like that rather than text. There's also a course that you can pre-register for that's really gonna go through the white paper in a collaborative um, group setting. So it's a chance to kind of really dialogue and discuss with others and meet others, and you can pre-register for that. And finally, I think I've gone through the system and, and this um, and the wiki. Um, and I want to end before we come to the breakouts. It's like if you want to kind of the, the most basic next step you could take is sign up for the newsletter, which you can also do on the front page. Um, and we'll be sending, we'll be starting a kind of set of maybe series of calls. Uh, Danielle might be leading uh, that if you want to kind of connect uh, and discuss more and that will new information on that will be in the newsletter. And you can also, if you want to actually get involved in contributing, basically come to the discord chat or drop us an email uh, that's information is on the website and we'd love to have uh, your participation. There's lots of opportunity to get involved and do things. Okay, so um, I'm just going to stop uh, sharing there for a moment and would love to, in a second, I think, uh, if we have a moment, Catherine, you set up the breakout rooms, we're going to come... There's a couple of things that we, I'm going to ask you questions on, but I just wanted to check first if there's anything any immediate question or something that people wanted to flag? I don't know if you could check the chat for me. Um, yeah, so just if there's anyone wanted, I do also want to take a moment just to acknowledge, I know several people are on the call, not everyone, um, but, you know, James, Narian uh, has, you know, uh, here, Danielle, um, and my colleagues, Laura, and so on. There's been many people who kind of are helping contribute to this project and, and make it happen. And I just want to extend my gratitude to them and just acknowledge also that they, if you've got specific questions, for example, about the wiki, Simon's here um, and so on. So, uh, yeah, I just want to say that as well. Any questions before we come to a breakout room and a, and, and, uh, a chance to, to anything immediate on anyone's mind? Wow, I've done an incredible job. Okay, excellent. So one, let me just check the chat. Um, uh, how are you flagging like to share a tool from your room or anything? Um, I, I 
be great. We might not have time for everyone, but it'd be wonderful to hear yeah, anything that happened. And if you haven't got a chance, as Catherine says, to fill in the mentee, that would be great. And you can also put things in the chat, by the way, if you either run out of time or you feel shy, just feel free to ask a question in the chat as well. Uh, great, uh, Yuli. Please go ahead and share, uh, ask your question or summarize what you heard in the room. Sure. One of the richest things that came from the room at the end there is that we noticed like ways we tend to talk to new people about these ideas, but also ways we tend to avoid. And, in, and we noticed that there are some ways we tend to avoid um, that kind of signal what we're doing when we're talking to them. And it seems it seems that we're doing we're trying to increase our capacity for cooperation, but there are different ways of doing this. So we could try to arrive at a shared definition, point to a bunch of different historical trends um, or kind of different communities that use sh the same language. We could uh, instead more so focus on getting a feeling alignment. Um, kind of talking about the raw emotion and feeling each other in that context together. We're in the same mission. Um, or we could try to uh, align attention around action. So for example, I might tend to point to um, what do we do in the kitchen at home? Or how do we distribute resources in this local kind of partnership thing? And so there's these different ways of going about it. They're all striving for cooperation, but there's a couple of modes that are distinct and different that might have different effectiveness on the audience or the context. So that was really interesting to notice. And to summarize them, they're like definitions or feelings or aligning actions is the kind of ones that came up most easily. That's great. And I want to emphasize that there's just so clearly not one way to eat. There's not even one, obviously, actual answer in any of this, but there's also not one way to present this. There's, you know, every time you share with someone, obviously, you're adapting uh in, in as you say in the context i really want to emphasize that i mean even obviously on a website or other or other material you have to kind of put something down but um you know even also even the 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 pictures or the the other feelings of how we do that is very important but yeah it's a really great point and um i think that's uh you know thank you for sharing pascal thank you um, so I was just triggered by um, saying that how do we not introduce the space? And I think that I feel myself so often trying to steer away from like new age uh, movements. So basically, like, how do I formulate this project without sounding like, ah, okay, you're one of one of those people. Um, <laughs> And I have a lot of sympathy for 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 a new age movement, but but uh, I I find that the 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 most difficult thing is like how do you um yeah how do you explain these these kind of projects and I think uh, the explaining it through the lens of collabor collaboration as Yuli did is like a one one nice way nice way of doing it, um but yeah yeah. Yeah, and I mean, just just to be also to say a motivation, I'll come back to someone is for us is particularly the site. Like we understand that most of the time this happens. You talk, you you know, you talk to someone. What we've seen though is, let's say, you know, we talk to a, you know, even people who think we run a space that people come to in Bergerac in France, and one of the things we've noticed is like. Not, not there's any requirement to come, but sometimes you're having a discussion with people. And you're like, oh, I want to send them some follow up. You know, I've had an hour chat, but there's a lot I've touched on. You know, just to emphasize here, we know that this is only a small complement, like the actual material, for example, on the website to in-person interaction or other things. And to go back also, Pascal, you know, I one of the things we talked about is having like, maybe not on second renaissance or other places, but like different landing pages with different terms, different feeling. Like if I was talking to someone who is in like, policy you know i used to work i used to do quite a lot of work with governments you know i wouldn't present kind of maybe as the website is now you know or the the you know or if i you know but you know it's very difficult to have something that works for everyone so one of the other ideas is different kinds of things or even like have different covers for the report you know you can send the same content but one in a very kind of like you know, I don't know, cold, governmental, like, you know, very professional feeling and the other much more artistic and rich. And I should emphasize here, I know uh, my partner, she's not feeling so well, 
uh, Sylvie here, but if I could, yeah, she's an artist and, you know, she's behind and, and, you know, she's very much wants the art of the second Renaissance versus, you know, the kind of policy of the second Renaissance. Um, so, yeah, I also see some good question in the chat. Please do feel free to put up uh, your hand. I also just want to emphasize there are lots of uh, opportunities to get involved and that, you know, get involved can, can be actually, you know, it can be as simple as things as like, you know, we want to turn the map that we have into an HTML image map. So we just need half an hour of someone's time to do a bit of HTML, or it could be, you know, you like creating art, you know, we want to create dream. We dream of creating an art festival of the second Renaissance. Um, there's a sec, uh, unconference or festival, which is an amazing suggestion, Stephen. Uh, yes, that would, um, you know, I, 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 a festival of being, um, so yeah, I mean, these are really, there are really lots of ways if you want to get involved, do, you know, ping us or come on the Discord chat. Um, that's one thing I just want to emphasize. I'm just checking if there are any other questions I, I'm missing here. Um, uh, and yeah, like the different landing page, you know, for example, I don't know if people here, many people I imagine are familiar with effective altruism or things like that. I've, I know quite a lot of people from effective altruist kind of area and, you know, having a landing page that was specifically created for that. And I've talked to quite a few people in that area and some of them have worked at life itself and definitely having something framed for them, for example, would actually be really helpful of like, there are specific questions in my experience they tend to ask or skepticism they have, um, understandably, that would want to be addressed. Um, or conversely, you know, if you're really into shamanism, you know, how does this relate? Um, amazing suggestions, Pascal. That's really, when we're really open to that, people wanting to start particular sub things um, in, in connected. Um, yeah. Any other questions at the moment that someone would like to ask or hasn't been covered in the chat? Uh, um, I also know someone's saying about online versus in person, like the space, uh, I would say, uh, Stephen, I noticed a comment for you of like the, uh, I, I think it's, it really varies in that obviously, I don't know, I don't know how much people here know about life itself, but obviously we have quite a few like residential hubs and I'm, we're based next to Plum Village, which is like a Buddhist monastery. So I'm quite big on that, like the, uh, the like in-person embodied aspect of it. But obviously this meeting would be very difficult um, if we were all had to be in person. So I kind of see the, 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 the beauty of both, but I really resonate. I don't know if that's your point, Stephen, if the, the limits of that and the power of being in person, I don't know if you want to say something more to it. Yeah, well, I guess it's just something that um, I could certainly imagine being on the Second Renaissance site, which is like an events tab. And uh, yeah, like, cause there are, there are, plenty of people who you know much prefer meeting in person really struggle with online and, and zoom and like will really just but uh, if you put them in a room full of people that are kind of already on that sort of frequency they'll totally get it so um yeah. i said in the in the breakout room like i mean the idea would be that um if some, when someone discovers this site and gets like excited and curious about it feels some resonance with it they can click on some events page and then anyone around the world they find that there is some kind of second renaissance in-person event going on that weekend you know not more than an hour from where they live you know we're thinking really big here but like yeah just planting that seed that would be amazing and i want to say i mean first of all you're really seconded by uh, sylvie here really is not a particularly big online person so she resonates a lot with that I think also to say, one thing I want to say is both that would be amazing. And one of the big things also for the site, and I, I'm also looking at Narayan here, uh, Narayan, sorry, if I'm, um, is that we want to point out, we know that there's going to be quite a bit going on, like the dandelion.earth site, which I know, you know, you help run. We While we might curate things, I think our dream is more, we might be able to point to like, go to this site in Toronto, you know, like this, or this person is curating amazing things of Toronto or check, you know, we, we do think that this is going to be bigger than that. So yes, and it's more, we hope to be almost like a meta list at the moment. 
The thing that I guess I dream of as well from that I saw happen in the rationality and effective altruism community, which I think of sometimes as like something we could take real inspiration and, and also connect to, was, you know, there were like less wrong meetups. There were, you know, um, you know, EA meetups locally. So I think that's something that would be really cool is, you know, I don't know, um, you know, um, you know, I know that the guy running uh, the story is like less foolish, uh, his sub stack, you know, and it's like, w- there could be less foolish meetups or a little wiser or something like that. Um, I think that's a really also cool idea of like, is there a pattern? And if, again, a suggestion for someone is cool. Second Renaissance, I think like almost a little recipe of like, start your, you know, Second Renaissance local meetup or whatever would be really, really cool. Um, and, and a way to find that or go to this existing meetup, which is kind of basically the same type of thing. You know, maybe it's a liminal web meetup here. You know, the term doesn't matter, but there's the, the, the area. Um, I know we're in the last couple of minutes, so I do want to just take a second maybe to let to let everyone check out. Like everyone's been here. We have got maybe enough time if we go around. Uh, if you want to, that you get to check out maybe just three words of how you're leaving or what you got from this um and you know or anything like that so i'm a, I, I don't know if my screen is ordered but i'm gonna start with pascal and then julia julia if you'd like to say how you three words how you're how you're leaving today pascal julia okay um i'll go with a classical one first inspired <laughs> um Great. I'm going to be Wondering. fine. We're, we're, that's, it could be one word. Julia, what are we, how are you leaving? Yeah. What are you getting? What have you got? You, one word, three words. <laughs> I'm leaving thinking. Amazing. David and David, you. Contemplative. Thank you. Catherine and then Kezia. Uh, making new connections. Margaret and then Simon. You're muted, so I'm or I didn't hear you, but thank you. I you looked happy. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. Um yes. Good. Lots of potential here. Potential. Yes. Potential. Perfect. Stephen and then Megan. Great cool. Curious. Thank you. James and then Danielle. Dedicated. Yeah. Excited. <laughs> Narayan and then Yuli. Momentum. <laughs> Meaning and. Lauren and then Robert. Intrigue. Energized. James, Nick, and then Sylvie. Curious, heartened, and inspired. Thank you. Uh, curious as well. Wonderful. Sylvie? Proud and tired. Proud and tired. Thank you so <laughs> much. And I think I've done a miracle We've end, for myself, at least, of ending on time. I will, we will, I will stay around if anyone wants to have some immediate questions, so don't feel you'll be cut off. But please feel free to drop everyone else. Thank you so much for your presence. Look forward to seeing you connecting again. Have a wonderful day or evening or morning. <laughs> Bye-bye.